Late December will see the expiration of many protections for U.S. citizens from the pandemic. We're talking eviction moratoriums, unemployment benefits, and student loan deferments, just to name a few. And this is all being handled during an uneasy transition from the Trump to the Biden administration. We're joined now by Henrietta Trays. She is director of economic policy research at Veda Partners to discuss what this looks like for Henrietta, uh, for Washington. Henrietta, thank you so much for joining us. Clearly, Congress has a really long to-do list. Uh, more government assistance to the unemployed is at the very top of it. But what a lot of us tend to forget is that they still need to fund the government or we could face another shutdown. Walk us through how you think the government funding will unfold. Well, thanks for having me, Scarlett. Um, starting after Thanksgiving, there will be much more serious conversations about how to fund the government, which in and of itself for the full year is probably a $1.4 trillion proposition. They need to write a bill and actually 12 different bills to pass those through Congress um, in order to keep the lights on after December 11th. And what they have started, just barely scratching the surface, is coming to an agreement between Democrats and Republicans about how they do keep those lights on. And the interesting thing for investors is that this is obviously a must pass piece of legislation. No one wants to shut the government down going into a second wave of the coronavirus pandemic, the holiday season, and two Senate races up in Georgia on January 5th. So this is the quintessential definition of a must-pass piece of legislation in Washington. Um, the House Republicans and Democrats need to come together, and the Senate Republicans and Democrats need to come together mm. to put a bill on the president's desk for his signature. And that means it's a possible vet vehicle for stimulus to attach right. itself. So we're watching very closely for a discussion, as you mentioned, around unemployment insurance benefits and extension of the student loan forgiveness uh, delays, um, eviction moratoriums, and uh, potentially even some of those lending programs from the Treasury and Federal Reserve that y'all were mentioning in your last segment to see if they can get attached and carry along with that CR. The thing is, the president has made clear he doesn't want to sign a spending bill with a big price tag, um, like $1 trillion. Do we know what kind of bill he would be willing to sign, or will we need to count on Congress to override a veto? Right. As your viewers will recall, last time the president signed a bill of this magnitude, I think it was $1.36 trillion or so, the government had been shut down for over 30 days, and he swore never to sign a bill like that again. So what they're going to do instead is just break it up into tiny pieces, and ultimately the final number will be the same, but it'll be a more digestible bite. So instead of passing one big $1.4 trillion package, they'll break it up into the 12 different bills. Maybe one of them will get some long-term certainty, but the rest will only be funded for a few weeks' time, into February or maybe even March. So you basically cut it down into small bite-sized pieces and then put it on the president's desk. There's a way to do it if you get sufficient support in the Senate, 67 votes or more, mm -hmm. that you don't even need the president's signature. So we might be working with that as well, depending on how the White House decides to act going into these final days of their administration. Okay, very quickly, Henrietta, you served in the Senate Finance Budget and Banking Committees during the Great Recession, a very out of the ordinary time. Clearly, this is not ordinary times. If the Senate was pressed to move, how quickly could it move? Because so far, all we've seen is status and roadblocking. Right. You need you can get a bill through the House and Senate in three days. If you really put your back into it, you can get it done in time. Um, in addition, I would just point out that December 11th is pretty irrelevant. There's also a whole another week before the Congress typically adjourns for the holidays. So if they kick the can for one week, they buy themselves seven more days. We pass it in mid-December instead of the 11th. That, they can do that, too. But they can move fast when they need to. All right, got it. So there is reason to be optimistic then. Henrietta Trays, Director of Economic Policy Research at Veda Partners. Thank you so much. The biggest stories, the moment they happen from around the globe. Subscribe to Bloomberg Quick Take now for insight in an instant.